Hello there YouTube, thanks very much for joining me on Dean the Vaping Biker and today we are going to be having a look at the Serpent Mini. Now this isn't a, a short one because I've tried to do a couple of, uh, show you a couple of builds for this as well as the wicking as well. So I'm terribly sorry but I'll try and get the wrap up section at the end nice and quick as well and not just ramble on like I'm doing now. So let's go up close and we'll check it out. Come on then! So here we are up close with the Serpent Mini with this kind of, it looks blue on, on screen but it's actually a, a black denim kind of affair uh, printed on there. They've got some funky stuff going on with their boxing at the moment. I'm kind of, kind of digging it so it's all good. So let's have a little look. Serpent Mini on there, some random denim going on there, barcode, a um, little bit of a warning there, scratch and sniff. And that's it. That's all you've got to worry about other than the uh, the stainless bit telling you what colour your your Serpent Mini is. So poking this out, let's have a little look and see what we get. Um, mine came all crumpled. Um, but you've got a, a pretty reasonable little uh, um, uh, how-to guide there. Sort of a quick start guide, if you like. Um, telling you all of the uh, bells and whistles and everything you need to need to be aware of when it comes to building your serpent, which is pretty reasonable. One of these little t-shirts that uh, that that uh, don't fit Todd. Uh, we've got that as well. And let's have a little look, see at the serpent itself. Now, uh, I am going to bring up the exposure just a little bit, uh, just to get a bit brighter. Um, and here, here it is itself. Now you can see we've got the uh, the tank, which we'll come to in a second, and we have a spare glass just going on up here. Now we can take out this section, and we get three bags. Now, each one of these bags say comp wire, but each one of these bags has something different in it. So to uh, to show you what's going on here, this one has cotton. <clears throat> it looks just like a regular Japanese cotton. Um, this one here, open that up, has some coils. Three, the most random number. It looks like it's kind of twisted, twisted 28 maybe. Looks a little bit too thin to be twisted 26, but yeah, something along those lines. Anyway, that's there. Don't know if it's uh, if it's N80 or Canthal. Um, I've been making my own coils for this. I can't get them back in the bag, so that'll do. Right. And in this one, we have oh, a screw. Come out, you buggers. A bunch of O-rings going on here. There's a load in there that are all stuck. Look at these, they're all pretty colours and everything. So if you want different colours on your stuff, you can. Now obviously, because you've got it in one of these bags, it makes it a little bit challenging if you lose uh, these kind of tiny little little uh, grub screws or there's a couple of the or one of these little tiny little uh, O-rings here. So that would be super easy to lose. So when you do open that, don't just open it over the top of your lounge carpet because I think that could cause issues. You've got a uh, you've got a normal Allen key there, mortally mortally wounded because in the uh, with the with the thing. Look look. Oh, it's supposed to come with a, one of them t-shaped ones it didn't um i think they're really cool anyway now only playing this is this is absolutely fine um and it's the normal set of spares that you would deal with and what we might do is we might change the color of the o-rings on this tank as we look at it so let's get into the tank moving all rubbish and crap to one side so this is the uh, the mini itself the serpent mini there's absolutely no relevance to the um kind of its bigger brother the actual serpent um, I'm just getting that focus nice and sharp for us. Um, I may not have done the best best job cleaning this, but you'll have to put up with it. Um, yeah, it's not the yeah, it's it, there's there's nothing nothing similar to the big serpent at all. This is actually super easy to work and a doddle to build on. Um, however, it is a single um, a single coil sort of affair. Although you could jewel it if you were if you are so inclined now let's just have a take this apart we've got the drip tip which has a funneled kind of vibe going on 
down the middle of that so no juice i don't know if you saw the ideal ohm show yesterday uh but um rick was mentioning that he doesn't like it when juice kind of collects down the bottom there because it does inevitably provide some sort of level of spit back and that's absolutely correct what they've done also here is they've kind of um pressed this through um with a with some kind of die or former or whatever um to push through into what looks like it could just been a plate of steel uh because it actually is folded over this is this is not hollow as such but it's you know it's folded over onto itself so you've not got just a big thick bit of uh, metal drip tip getting all hot and scary uh it's a lot thinner which will allow it to disperse heat a lot quicker and um yeah i mean it's quite a comfortable little drip tip in your mouth as well so i've actually quite enjoyed this one now then, when it comes to the tank itself, we can look at breaking it down. But first, we've got the serpent in a serpent mini in a laser engraving in the top there, and then underneath, we've just got the serpent mini and the normal Watofo stuff. So uh, no, uh, no, no, no extra good details going on there. Um, it looks like a peak insulator in the bottom there. Not entirely sure. I'll have to check that when we go up top. And it looks also as though we've got a gold-plated 510. So taking this apart, when we unscrew just this top section here, um, this is the fill mechanism. So just taking that top section off gives us these massive great big fill holes. So it's super easy to fill up. It's not one of these kind of slow jobbies when you've got high or thick VG um, uh, juices. I've had no problems with that whatsoever. Obviously that's here and here, not down the middle, that's the chimney. So yeah, so that's that. Now taking it apart further, um, the airflow ring Although it's on both sides, so it's dual core, well, sorry, a dual air ring, um, it is only a single core, and we'll see why that is in a second. But um, yeah, those holes both open up and close at the same time on each side. That makes no difference whatsoever. Now, if you go all the way closed, hold on to the glass and give it a little turn, that's how you get your base out. And that is like so, which we'll come to in a second. This is the chimney section. You can strip this apart. And this is a great move from Watofo because we haven't seen this um, for a long time. Um, we can actually clear this totally apart for cleaning, which I think makes things a lot, lot better, in my opinion. So it's a nice fat chamber you've got there. Um, however, there is a slight issue to be aware of, which we'll come to in a second. Now, this is the deck itself. As you can see, those dual airflow holes will go up into that uh, central portion there. And that's a nice, big, thick, fat air hole. Um, I should have measured it prior to being on camera, but as we know, no, Dean isn't prepared. Um, let's have a little look, see at this. So that's coming out uh, approximately four, four and a quarter mil, <clears throat> which is a nice big airflow. So having a four mil hole there is uh, is pretty good. Now because it's only a single, it still does give us a restricted hit, but uh, or restricted draw rather. But uh, but it is it is pretty good. I've had no uh, no problems with that. But we can discuss that when we go up top. Now then. <clears throat> When we come to coiling, which we're going to do in a second, uh, there's a couple of things to be aware of. Let me get a pointy thing. Now, you've got your, this is your negative post here, because there's no, that's directly into the deck. There's no, uh, there's no um, insulator there. The insulator is on this side because this is your positive post. Now, we'll see that when we put wires in here, um, they have to go uh, right, the, well, you, you cut them, kind of at the end of that section there. All right, now it has to be super, super flush. Um, otherwise, I mean, you can see that this threading here, which is where the uh, where the, 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 the kind of the barrel of the chimney goes over, um, or the chamber, um, that is pretty much bang on with the, uh, with the deck itself. So you have to be incredibly flush. And this is my safety concern with this, with this product itself, because whilst, any kind of serious protrusion from here will not allow you to put this um, this chamber over the top of it. Um, you could, in theory, have a small protru protrusion, whoever misses, um, which would come out of the uh, the positive here and only slightly touch the inside of the uh, of the of the chamber and uh, cause a short. 
So that is something that I would be very, very aware of. Personally, I use um, very kind of flat um, clippers so I can get as close to it as I possibly can do. Um, that for me helps me uh, be a little bit more confident but even then especially if you're going to do things like claptons where you'll get a little bit of an extra bit of clapton wire poking out the end sometimes just be aware that that is something you have to take um, you know well you just you know, take take what was I going to take <laughs> you just have to watch out for right then now the other thing and these are the only kind of issues I've got, but I have to point them out because they are, you know, in my mind, quite serious ones. Now, we've got the, uh, we unscrew the, the the clamp grub screws there. Oi, didn't turn off my volume on my phone, look. Who would have thought it? Right, that's better. Um, so these are the grub screws. We undo these as uh, as normal, but they're coming out the sides instead of uh, anywhere else. And... On the initial pictures, I thought it was going to be some kind of clamping system, but it wasn't. It's, it is just this grub screw that goes through. Now, while this is fine for thicker wire, um, what we've got here, and then let me see if I can get really up close on this for you. Okay, see how we get on with this. Um, what we've got here is if I screw this, um, this grub screw in a little bit, which is going to be from the other side, you know it? Right. If I screw that in, what we can see, if I can keep things together long enough to be able to do it, is, can you see there's a sort of a gap underneath that screw? Um, or at least even where the thread is as well. Um, and so that means, there you go, that's kind of a little bit of a better shot there. So that means if you're if you're someone that uses particularly thin wire all the time, you're, you're kind of 28 and 30 gauge, you're going to have potentially a bit of an issue making that uh, making that stick. And we'll see what happens when we use larger wire in a minute. But, um, but yeah, that is a bit of a problem. And that is something that, you know, I think needs to be raised because this being a single coiler, um, is going to be something that a lot of people who enjoy to build that particular way will uh, will go for. Now then, um, we've got a couple of builds that I'm going to show you for here in a minute and a couple of different ways of doing it. Uh, what we've got here though is the juice channels. Um, what I do is, and we'll see, is my cotton just basically rests along the top here and now I've had no problems with that whatsoever. Um, so, I mean, it is stepped, so I imagine some people are going to say to take cotton down to that first step or something along those lines. Uh, but we'll see how I go about it in a second. But yeah, um, we'll have a look and see what we've got build wise to play with and I will put one of those colored colored o-rings in in a bit I think right let's pop this on here get us in a focus da, 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 da. this is not gonna be as quick as I wanted <clears throat> I really did think that this is going to be a pretty quick show today or a pretty quick review today but uh, I don't think that's going to happen Right, let's see if we can get this all really tight up. I think this is going to be about as good as we get it. Right, okay, so if you want your coils to fit in here super comfortably, um, what I've done is I've wrapped three different types of coils here. This is a 26 gauge. Now, if you wrap it counterclockwise, the legs will automatically fall in the right sort of situation for those um, for those clamps. So it allows you to uh, not really have to dick around. The coils will come out from the bottom of the coil like so um, and will automatically just fall in there. Now this is a 26 gauge coil. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tighten these up just to see if there is any movement with 26 gauge. Um, I think it's gonna depend on how you get it clamped under the uh, under the under the how's your father under the uh, the grub screw to be honest with you um if you wanted to muck about and you wanted to sort of keep your thumb up a little bit so you can raise the raise the uh, wire to make sure it's under the screw that's there but you know we just need to make sure that that is kind of let's have a look now we can see already that whilst this grub screw is tight um 
if I if I what did I just do here? If I move this, if I move the coil, oh, you're not seeing it. If I move this coil about, this wire here is moving. You see that? And that's because it's not clamped tightly underneath that uh, that grub screw. Let's have a little look up close at this one. And how harsh. Okay, so is it that one or is it that one? There we go, it's this one. So we know now that if we move this leg around, we can see the coil moving. And this scrub screw is done up tightly, but what's happened is that it's slipped. And this is 26 gauge, remember, this isn't kind of super mega thin stuff. Um, it's slipped underneath the screw itself. So I know it's all shiny, shiny, so it doesn't really help you. But um, because of that, it means that we have movement on the coil and a loose and a loose leg there. There you go. It's proper loose. I can actually move the whole thing. Um, and that to me is a downfall because, um, you know, they should have used, in my opinion, larger diameter grub screws to be able to uh, make full contact with with thinner wire so and let's say this is 26 gauge so it's not like it's kind of crazy but you know this one here because i stuck my thumb under it that has been uh, that's made contact directly behind the grub screw and so that is nice and solid that's not going anywhere but if you're just going to lay them in and be lazy about what you're doing which is how i build most of the time that's going to be an issue for you right now then let's uh let's go back to uh pop in a couple of different quick builds in here so you can see what's what now we're going to get this back on anytime you're ready to find a thread where is it there it is there it is right let's get this old coil out now, remember I said about winding it anti-clockwise. That means that it just falls in place. Now, not all of you are going to do that. And if you do wind it clockwise, then that isn't the end of the world. To be honest, most of mine are clockwise. So if your screwdriver or coil master is in your left hand, um, I will wrap over the top with the right hand, you know, so it'll go over. Now, if you're doing this um, to, to try and fit in here properly, then you would go under rather than over if that makes sense now this one is one that i did where i wrapped it the other way and that means that it sits like so which doesn't fit into the uh, into the into the holes or the clamps provided and so if you were to do that then obviously you're going to you're going to move things out quite a lot now the way i will go about doing this is where we've got those two uh, those two uh, legs coming off on the same plane down the bottom there is if I just take this over I'm using the coil master just for extra speed at the moment okay where's my pliers seriously what there they are found them calm down everyone Calm down, relax. Okay, so um, I've got them both coming out on the same plan. I'm doing a really bad job of this today, aren't I? I'm terribly sorry, everyone. Um, so now I've got them both coming off in a similar sort of angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my pliers and I'm going to bend that up like so. And this one is going to be exactly the same. Bent up like so. So now we've got a little elbow in the coil. And now when that goes onto the uh, onto the deck, that, that fits in there fine and dandy. So, you know, the, if you do wrap it the wrong way, then it's not the end of the world. The only thing you do need to be aware of is that once you're in there, once you've, uh, once you've clamped it down, you've got wires directly coming from the bottom. Well, you need to be aware of this the other way as well. Um, so once you're in there, you do need to raise it up. Now, this is 22 gauge that I'm using here just because it was easy to see on camera. Uh, 
So we're nice and easily clamped on there, um, but we are also touching the chimney. So you're going to get your you're going to get your screwdriver or whatever it is, and work it. So we're up and away from the uh, from the thing and because we bent those elbows into the sides of it it kind of makes a nice looking little coil in as much as it comes directly down off the coil and straight into the clamp so that's just a way of doing your your winding if you're uh, if you're a righty if you're a lefty i imagine that a lot of your coils will be lefties anyway now then what i'm going to use today oh we're just about there we're just about there people we are just about there is I have just wrapped up a Clapton where I've used dual 26 gauge um, N80 for the core and 36 gauge um, for the outside for the Clapton aspect of it. So we're going to wang this in here like so. Tighten this bad boy down. Super easy to build on, it really is. Once you get your the legs of your coil straight, you just pop it on, pop your finger on top of the coil, um, tighten up your tighten up your grub screws. And we're pretty much there. So now we've got to lift it up. Like so, so we're off the deck. Try and centralize that a little bit more. Now, interestingly, even with a dual core, um, it's gone directly underneath the grub screw here. You can't see that very well, but it's gone directly underneath the grub screw. And so even that's not making a, the, the best contact. It's not moving things around, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not absolutely ideal, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to make sure that that is super snug. As soon as I can get my bloody Alan key in the hole. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah, that is as tight as that's going to go. And that is as tight as that's going to go. So we'll just get this nice and centered. Wrap nice and tight. Like so. So that's in. Now we want to trim these sides off. And like I say, we'd have to get super close to the side of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the build deck there. Now, if you do go, as I mentioned earlier on, if you do go a little bit over that, then the uh, the chamber won't go over the top of the build deck. Um, but now, this is what I was on about before. Now, can we see that? Can we see that? Let me see if I can. Okay, so you can see here now that there is a little bit of wire. Oh, it's just broken off um, because of the Clapton. So now I actually have a small amount of wire just poking out the side there. It's tiny. I don't know if you can see that under the camera, but it, it is kind of there. It looks almost like a hair. Um, now that obviously is coming directly from the positive. So we don't want that in the equation at all. So just make sure that you have nothing coming out of the sides. Now, even then... I'm not convinced that this barrel is going to go over because this is sticking out just a hint. So what we can do is we can get the barrel. And sure enough, that's not going to happen. Now, let me uh, let me kind of see if we can get this really focused up for you. So it's this that little section there that's poking out that is stopping um that is stopping the the there's a hair in there there's an actual hair um there is stopping the barrel going over um which is absolutely tiny can you see that there oh a bit of muck on my nail it's just on this side just here um and so yeah this is where we have to really kind of try and get as close as possible with a decent pair of snips to uh, to get rid of it and I, I just think that this is unnecessary fucking around um to be honest with you 
I really do. Now, one of the things that I will also do is get a flat-headed screwdriver and just push that in just to make sure that there is nothing, nothing going to be showing to uh, upset your day. No, excuse me. Hopefully, we're good to go now. No, we've got a little bit on this side. And honestly, you can hardly see it. See that on this side here? That is just, how do you trim it back that tight? It's so, so much of a pain in the dick, it really is. And this is the, the issue, the only issue I have. Now, some people have said, can you do the wire twisting to get it off to come to, to, to break directly off at the grub screw? Well, yes, if you've got a decent enough contact, sure, you can. But uh, if you haven't, then no, you can't. All right, now then. There's a little bit going on there. Give it a little press with the old screwdriver. Like so. A little bit more again on that side. And now we should be fine and dandy. Yep, nothing touching there at all. Right. So. There we go. Let's have a little look at this. 0.35 on here at the moment. We are nearly there. The reason I really like this coil is because um, that N80, that 26 gauge N80 heats up so quickly on the inside um, and really does have a sort of a, a lower resistance when it comes to you know, how it performs. And so um, with the 36 gauge canthal on the outside, for me, it's just, uh, it's just my favorite type of Crapton for a nice warm vape. Right, that will have to do for now. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at this for hours and nobody needs that in their lives. So there we go. That's a, a fairly tightly wound little Clapton on there. Plenty of space on the deck when it comes to uh, clearance for the wires going under the over the top of the chimney. What I'm going to use, what shall I use? I'm out of my favourite cotton, which is mortifying. At least I think I am. Let me just check. Oh, dropping things again. Has this been a long enough review for you yet? Has it? Found some cotton. Calm yourselves. Calm yourselves down. Right, this is the final bit of peronin that I had left. Right, keeping this nice and easy. That's going to be too thick. Moving that away like so. Also, the uh, N80 cools down nice and quickly as well, which makes me happy. Okay, so we don't want to compress the cotton too much, although we do need to uh, be able to get it through the coil itself, obviously. go so we're snug but not too snug uh, scissors so what I've done there is I've cut it pretty much to the sides of the uh, of the the deck if that makes sense okay so now we, we can do is give it a bit of a bit of a fluff up now I do this kind of um, this uh, what was it, butterfly wing kind of shape purely because I will then tend to cut the tops off because I've used a three mil ID on the coil here that does give you quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of cotton so there and I've just just taken those top ends off there like so 
keeping things nice and simple. Now, what juice am I going to put in here today? Let's have some uh, DB liquids, them apples. Um, I'm going to stick this on here first, primarily because it helps when you're uh, when you're um, sticking the uh, the wicks down or getting the wicks to stay where you want them to go. And it doesn't really impede too much if you need to uh, if you need to cut them back at all. Just makes things a little bit messy. Right. So we're pretty much good to go there. I'm going to give that just a a very quick fire. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera, but if you pop, pop a load of thick VG on there, there you go. Did you see that? It suddenly went and it just goes for it, which I think uh, is quite cool. Now then, moving this to where we need it. Like I said earlier on, what I'm doing is off camera. Um, what I'm doing is moving the uh, the wick to primarily over the uh, over the top of the wick hole that it gives you, and also along the sides of the deck. Now we're not compressing it. We're not we're not really dicking around with it too much, but just trying to make sure the uh, threads are clear and there's space on that uh, that deck. Oh, sorry, there's space in the wick wicking holes to allow it to uh, really suck in the juice. Which I think is going to be pretty much like that, more or less. So just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more to play with on this side, just to flatten that down a bit. And if it's too bushy, if it's too wild and free, um, if it's like a magazine from the 70s, then all you need to do is just get the old scissors out and uh, and give it a trim. Said the vicar to the. Uh, as your father right so more or less that will do for the time being now let's have a little look about these o-rings shall we let's see about taking these out to change the colors so we've got this one here probably should have done this before i put the coil in to be honest with you take that one out what color should we do black can't go wrong with black can you We've got two different O-rings by the looks of it. One bigger, one smaller. So because this is bigger, this is smaller. I think that should be fairly self-explanatory. It should be anyway. Go on, you bugger. I've got juice on my finger now. All right, so let's see that little bad boy in there. Like so, and then we get to this chimney one. Try not to damage it when you're taking it off. You may want to use it again. It's not a condom. You can use it more than once. Right. Let's see if I put it on from the top. There we go. And we're on. Good to go. A little bit of blackness happening. So we'll pop the uh, the glass over the top of here try and make sure that the glass is seated properly before you uh, before you uh, try and screw it on i understand richard ing um broke his glass when because it wasn't quite straight so you want a fairly even gap all the way around your uh, your chimney once you do that and then what we're going to do is screw that on there if we can find the threads i have found that the threads on the uh, on this are a little bit on the janky side um which is you know it's a bit of a shame but there you go um but obviously if you weren't too too uh fastidious about your wicking then just by screwing that on your your uh the chamber has now kind of potentially upset the wick a little bit so if it does leak afterwards then it just means that you might have to go back in and um and have a little play with your wicking so what i'm going to do now is just fill this up to the top I know this is a top view for you guys, which isn't very clever. I do apologize for that. Leave a little air bubble going on. 
got the air closed off on the base as well by the way now what i've found and the, the thing that i've been doing with a lot of tanks recently is when you're popping this when you're popping the top on with any top fills don't don't just wang it on super quick once you start letting it feel a little bit of resistance just take it nice and slow and by doing that i've not had any issues with any leaking or, or anything along those lines although you watch now i'll do it and i'll open this and then it'll go horribly wrong no we're not leaking out of anywhere look at that look we happy days so we pop the uh, the old drippy tipo back on Get that little screw in so it sits properly and there we go that is the serpent mini so that was the long kind of drawn out way of doing things but i hope there was some value in there to someone somewhere and that's it let's go up top and we'll have a little vape right then everyone so that was the up close like i say it was much longer than i anticipated so i'll see if i can fast forward through any bits and bobs during that if i was uh, fannying around too much but uh, but yeah that is the uh, this bad boy right here excuse me so now the cons the cons on this come from the way you trim your wire next to the next to the sort of the post if you like uh, because i think that there is an issue there uh, with no insulation or with such a tight tolerance between that and the and the, uh, the 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 chamber or the kind of the inner barrel at the bottom of the chimney i think that does provide us with a bit of an issue um, but as long as you're careful about it, it's absolutely fine. Now, let's have a little vote. It looks cool with the black O-rings on. I think that looks quite groovy. Now, that's a cheeky 33.3 watts on there. So uh, let's, let's wang that up to a 44.4, shall we? There we go, 44.4. And with the way I've wicked this today, I've not had any problems at all because you've got those juice channels that come up and the wick's just sitting on top, then it'll just suck away whatever it needs. That's how I found it anyway, as long as you don't go ridiculous. You're not going to put 200 watts through it. You don't have the air. So, you know, it's going to do what it can do. But it is a very restricted, not very, it is a restricted lung hit. Um, so you're not going to be able to be, you know, you're not breathing through it as such. Um, yeah, I mean, what can I compare it to? What can I compare it to? Something like the Cleto, I imagine, is, uh, is far more open. But... Yeah, um, for the Cleto comparison, it's kind of about a quarter hole open on there. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Let's have a comparison with the Moonshot, shall we? Uh, fully open. Now, I think it's a tad, tiny bit more restricted than the Moonshot. Um, so if you're if that's too tight for you, this certainly will be. Now clearly there's going to be a bit of a relevance there to kind of how big your coil is, how much air can move around your coil. Uh, and I have put a three mil in this one, so it is a fair chunky bugger. Um, but you know it is what it is. Now I quite enjoy this, not for high power vaping, but for for just sort of pleasant vaping through the day vaping and all that sort of malarkey. It says it holds three mil, and I think that that is around about the kind of figure that we've got in we've got a fair amount of space at the side in between the uh, the chamber and the glass so there's no kind of slowing down of high thick vg going down that but that aspect so i've had no problems with that whatsoever um the flavor i think is good um as we know i'm not a massive flavor chaser because i'm horrific but um, I found that the flavour is pretty pretty good with this. I was a bit concerned when I started using this. I was using one juice in particular, and it was kind of giving me a bit of a strange flavour going on. Um, but in further further kind of look, <laughs> it turns out it was the juice. Um, but uh, but yeah. I'm okay with this. I think it's a decent little tank. It's not going to last. You're not going to be putting high wattage through it. So you're not going to have a, a requirement for massive air. And the reason you're not going to is because you're going to be filling up like a mofo. Um, the fact that you're getting three mil of juice in there is is kind of, you know, you can get you can get almost that in some drippers these days. So, um, you know, you've got, you've got uh, quite the... 
uh, quite the nice, easy to use, easy to wick, easy to coil, uh, bit of kit there that will give you a decent flavour, a decent budget price, and unlike a lot of the other Rotofo products we've seen recently, you can break this down and so you can clean it properly, which I like. The threading, sure, is a tiny bit on the janky side, um, but that is something that is um, that you, you're spending. I think these are going for around 25 quid or thereabouts. I got mine directly from Watofo. So um, I, I did have a quick look on Google and, you know, you've got you've got you've got the first I think the first three people were like Vape Geek, um, uh, M Vapes and Vapor Z. I think those are the first three people in the UK that have either got it now or it's coming in. Um, so I haven't looked at the prices on those guys, but, you know, there's options. This is going to be everywhere. It's a Rotofo product. It's going to be absolutely everywhere. And all in all, I think it looks pretty sweet. I think it kind of it. it, it it does what it says on the tin and it does it pretty well. Oh, that was a bit excessive. Um, that's all I've got to say about it. Right. So that was it. That was it. Trying to keep it nice and sharpish. Just please be careful when you're trimming, especially your positive wire. Um, the chamber itself won't let it go down if there's too much of a uh, of a um, kind of protrusion of wire at the end of that clamp. Uh, but, you know, just bear that in mind when you're doing it. If you've got a little flat screwdriver, you can just push your wire um, kind of properly back at the, at the uh, towards the grub screw like I did. Then that can kind of just give you a certain level of peace of mind as well but otherwise it's top filling it's little it's dinky it looks cute it tastes good everyone's a winner and it's cheap thanks very much for watching i've been dean the vaping biker this has been the watofo serpent mini that has nothing to do with the watofo serpent um, but it's uh it's a cracking little atomizer and that's all i've got to say thank you very much for watching hit subscribe check out my other videos let me know what you think and if you have one of these let me know how your experience has been as well thank you very much and i'll see you on the next one have it large It's come to an end I feel an obligation to start again